Welcome to A Flame for Christ, homilies to set your heart on fire with love for Jesus Christ. My name is Father Joseph Gill, and you've joined us in this first Sunday of Lent. There was a tribe in Africa that had a unique system of governance. Every seven years, they would elect the next king from among the men of the tribe. And this king would receive riches, praises, and all the comforts and pleasures that they could enjoy. And then, at the end of seven years, the king would be killed to make way for the next king. Would you accept such an offer? I know I'd have to think twice about it. I mean, seven years of riches and power and pleasure and then be killed. But isn't that precisely the allure of temptation, right? It offers us a temporary counterfeit happiness. And in the long run, sin makes us miserable both here and in the hereafter. But even though we understand this intellectually, all of us are still tempted due to the weakness of our nature through original sin. So how are we to understand temptations and how can we overcome them? First, three points about temptation in general. First, we must understand that temptations in and of themselves are not sins. There's one time that St. Catherine of Siena was assailed by severe and vile temptations, just intrusive thoughts that made her just feel dirty inside. She was so discouraged and she begged our Lord, where are you during these awful temptations? Jesus spoke to her and said, I was in your heart. But Catherine objected, how could you be in my heart when it was filled with these ugly, filthy thoughts? Jesus asked her, did these thoughts make you pleased or displeased? Well, Catherine responded that she was disgusted with these thoughts. And so our Lord responded, it was I who made you disgusted with them. For if I was not dwelling in your heart, you would have found them delightful. So even a strong temptation or feeling is not a sin so long as we don't have a desire to have it. Second important point about temptation, God allows temptations in order to make us holy. I once knew a young man who went to Catholic schools all his life, but when his Catholic high school had closed, he began to attend public school and at the same time became very, very fervent in his faith. In speaking with Michael, he shared that he had never really had to cho choose to follow Christ because the Catholic faith surrounded him at all times. But once he went to public school, he was faced with a serious choice, Christ or the ways of the world. And thankfully, he chose Christ. And the truth is, if we didn't have temptations, there'd be no opportunity to choose to follow Christ. The stronger the temptation, the greater the victory of our soul when we conquer it. Besides, temptations also keep us humble. When we feel overwhelmed with thoughts of anger or lust, envy or pride, gossip or cheating, we recognize our desperate need for a savior. Third, it's also important to remember that every temptation can be overcome. St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, he says, No temptation has ever overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape, so that you will be able to endure it. Sin is not inevitable, no matter how strong the temptation. Remember, the grace of God is always stronger than any temptation. So, since temptations are common to all human beings, how do we overcome them? Four suggestions. First, and kind of the most obvious, we pray. We pray where we're in the midst of temptations and pray tenaciously. Many times a quick Hail Mary is not enough to overcome a strong temptation. It may mean getting down on our knees and offering the rosary. Because the only thing stronger than sin is love. And when we love God more than we love our sin, we will be able to overcome any temptation. A second way to overcome temptation, to make resolutions. St. Dominic Savio, at his first communion, made several resolutions for himself, one including this one, which may surprise us. His motto was, death rather than sin. Death rather than sin. And yeah, it might be helpful in times of temptation to make those kinds of resolutions in our heart, or even out loud, saying, Lord Jesus, grant that I may die a thousand deaths rather than offend you. Lord Jesus, I reaffirm that you are king of my life. Lord Jesus, I will suffer and endure all things for love of you. A third great help to temptation is fasting and self-denial. It's a powerful means because our will is like a muscle. If we exercise it, it grows strong, but if we let it sit, it just becomes flabby and weak. So likewise, if we freely choose to do difficult things like giving up chocolate or rising earlier for prayer or taking a cold shower, then we are strengthening our will so that when temptation comes, we have the strength to resist. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, we must flee from temptations right at the very beginning. As Mark Twain humorously observed, there are many good protections against temptations, but the surest is cowardice, right? Running away from it. St. Padre Pio has used this example. He said, the devil is like a rabid dog tied to a chain. Beyond the length of the chain, he cannot seize anyone. And you keep at a distance. If you approach too near, you let yourself be caught. 
you know, in our Catholic theology, we talk about avoiding the near occasion of sin, which is a person, place, or thing that we know will tempt us into sin. So if spending time with a certain friend is always an occasion for gossip, maybe we need to find ways to spend less time with them. If our smartphone or computer is a temptation, we've got to put an internet filter on it or get a dumb phone. If we're tempted to envy every time we walk into Forever 21, then go shopping at Target instead. Socrates used to say, know thyself. And that's good example for this, good advice for the spiritual life too. Know your weaknesses and when we are vulnerable to temptation and flee any person, place, or thing where we know we're going to be tempted. My friends, Christ was able to conquer temptations by standing firm in prayer, in the word of God, and by fasting. But did you notice the rewards of his faithfulness? The gospel tells us that angels ministered to him. After the battle, we too will enjoy the company of angels and saints. And that is worth fighting for.